I'm sitting here today in Carrow Creek and I've got Natalie with me and we've been talking about uh, some different issues that, that Natalie feels are important and Natalie's one of those great examples I love to hear about that's woken up one day in Sydney and said, you know what, there's a better life than Sydney and the better life is here in Carrow Creek. But there's some things you'd like to see explored and developed further from a state government perspective. So yeah. the first of those is probably around health. Absolutely, around health. Um, you know, and I know there's problems statewide generally with health, but having had a lot to do within, I guess, the health system, somehow we need to inject, you know, more money and more interest and be able to attract more practitioners to our region. And um, as Matthew and I were talking about, I think to, to attract more people and practitioners on all levels within health, nurses, doctors, and all the other staff that, that are around that, we need to make this a much more attractive place to live in regional Australia. And, you know, having left the city and and come to this region, there's definitely a lot of opportunities here and you're not lacking, I don't know, we're not, I wouldn't say, in some ways, and this is gonna sound crazy and we didn't talk about that, in some ways, the wait time on services is less. The problem is we're not serviced by enough people. The services aren't at a high enough level. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we need to improve the, yeah, the height of the level of the services. And of course, we were also talking about, um, you know, community and social housing and mental health. Yeah. And those areas are really strongly connected. Yeah. And mental health is very big on the agenda. World Health Organization, the, the predictions of depression are enormous worldwide. So what are we going to do to improve mental health in rural regions? And, and there's been a lot of stuff initiated that, you know, programs that we're going to help men and we're going to this. And as you and I talked about, it's not good enough to just fund a program for two years and then expect change. Uh, intergenerational change is what's required. Yeah. And, and you, you cannot get generational change mm. in two years. Absolutely so, not. So and that's why it's called intergenerational change. Right. We need 10 to 12 years to start to create yeah. these effects. So these short-term solutions and having worked in some government departments, so I worked you know, within Medicare Local, within Housing New South Wales, these programs were great programs, but they pulled the plug just as things were starting to work. Yeah, that's right. And I, I, that is one of my frustrations with government is it's all very short-term, it's all the next election, mm. rather than saying we need to have some big picture thinking and make long-term decisions. That just seems to have been forgotten about now. Yeah. yeah, so it's definitely that longer vision, that longer picture, and having these expectations that things are just going to change instantly. That's not how humans work. No, right. And also we were talking about job security. We have a culture you know, and it's probably a worldwide thing, and but within our society, of temporary positions. So no one feels secure. We have the NDIS, which is very big in the media, but all these people are employed casually. We've got to start to go back, I think, to having jobs with job security, and you don't just turn up for that high hourly rate. And that, that will also attract more people to come and live out here. But I mean, it's a state issue. Yeah. But we do need job security. And you're Not, talking there about those, those government jobs which now are often temporary or often contracted. So they, they, they often take those government jobs and, and say, let's make them contracted jobs. Mm. And then they become a contractor which might have a, a year contract, for example. And of course, so for argument, you know, as we were saying, it's not necessarily local tradies or local contractors. You know, it's this whole filter down that they finally get the job. But in the meantime, the people in our region have waited six months to get service, but someone else sitting in Wagga Wagga is, is controlling yeah. the whole, the, the way everything's managed. So, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And regional growth was another issue we talked about, mm. attracting people. Really talking about what we have out here and what we have out here in the main is pretty good. It is. And getting that information into Sydney metro areas. And we yeah. did mention things like Evo Cities, funding for Evo Cities, and really just getting the message out there is so important. Oh, it's extremely important because, you know, my quality of life has definitely improved um, by leaving the city and coming here. Um, there is community inclusion. So you and I were talking about and I, and I had this experience when I lived in Sydney and I've lived in big cities up until 12 years ago, my whole life. You don't know your neighbours. You know, one of my really good friends, I only met her two weeks before I moved out of my house. So she's travelled all the time up here and when I travel back and see her, she's like, oh my God, you lived there for seven years and I didn't know you. So you're not a faceless nothing here, you know. Um, and that's really, really important, having that community inclusion. 
Anyway, enjoy the chat today. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I did Thank come you. out here initially to see your husband, but uh, your husband stayed very quiet while, <laughs> while, while you, you chat away, which is, which is fine. That's absolutely fine. So, okay. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye.